Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Nies Goda. Welcome back to AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and another edition of the Wound Care Window. I'd like to introduce you to someone special today. We have a new nurse practitioner here at AZH, Michaela. Welcome on board. Thank you. So when we bring a new nurse practitioner on board or a new provider of any type, we do instruction. And I would like to illustrate how we do that instruction and further illustrate the guidelines for the utilization of negative pressure wound therapy. We saw a patient in consultation. She had a surgical, uh, a partial dehiscence of a surgical wound over her right knee after knee arthroplasty, and she was referred to us for healing recommendations. If you look at this photo, you'll see her wound. Uh, really, it was uh, fairly uh, deep. Uh, it certainly didn't violate into the joint space. Uh, there was no significant, fortunately, no significant undermining or tunneling. But what you will notice, there is a, certainly a paucity of granulation tissue and we elected to initiate negative pressure wound therapy, uh, primarily to granulate this wound. So the patient comes back after a very short time, actually only two weeks, and we'll take a look at her wound here. See, she's made some excellent progress on the back. Now, Michaela, we have a wound here uh, surgical wound and the goal of a surgical wound is granulation granulation great so do you think we've done a reasonable job of granulating the wound base yes so negative pressure is really is is used uh, as a tool uh, across the world and it's a very powerful granulating tool and I think you can see the difference between those two the two wounds on initial presentation today that we have nicely uh, filled this wound in for granulation so Michaela now what we need to do is, is decide you know, what do we do with negative pressure wound therapy and what are our transition points? Um, we know that, uh, you know, uh, once you get to a certain stage, uh, you need to make a decision on transitioning to other modalities. And I think we're at a point uh, evaluating this wound is, you know, is it appropriate to continue negative pressure or can we transition off? So what are the endpoints, uh, would you think, for uh, continuing negative pressure or when would we consider stopping? So what, what goals do we want to achieve with negative pressure wound therapy? So granulation. Granulation. So we've done a good job of granulating the wound. What mm -hmm. else? Uh, a shallower wound bed. Yes, yeah, so we want to eliminate as much wound depth as we can. And again, looking at these uh, two photos in comparison, you can see that the wound is nearly uh, superficial and flush with the surface. It has filled in entirely with granulation tissue. So I think we've achieved that objective of uh, decreasing depth, right? What else? Preventing infection. Preventing infection. Good. And this wound looks very healthy and clean. How about if we had some tunneling or sinus formation or some undermining, would that be an indication for negative pressure therapy? Yes. Do you see any of that here? No. No, so we've really granulated the wound, we've eliminated any dead space uh, in, in terms of undermining uh, sinus or tunneling formation, so really we have a wound that uh, has reached an endpoint for negative pressure wound therapy. One of the problems with maintaining negative pressure wound therapy in a wound like this is that you start to actually have a detrimental effect on wound because what does negative pressure therapy not allow uh, a wound to do? Epithelialize. Epithelialize, right. Now we've got a granular base. We want that epithelium to form across the wound. And by putting a mechanical plug across it, uh, you're actually inhibiting a gran uh, a neoepithelialization. And to an extent, obviously, there will be some, some epithelialization to take place, but it'll take place much more rapid. Uh, without that mechanical barrier, that being the sponge across the wound base. So we're going to go ahead and DC negative pressure wound therapy and transition to a, an alternative moist wound therapy. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Wound Care Window and our introduction to uh, Michaela and uh, some guidelines for the utilization of negative pressure wound therapy. Remember, negative pressure therapy is a great granulating tool. It should be used to decrease uh, depth, decrease undermining and tunneling, fill the wound in with granulation. But once you've reached those endpoints, uh, you need to DC negative pressure wound therapy and transition to an alternative management regimen. Thank you so much. See you next week. Yeah.